Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with ericstrains.com and welcome to episode 13 of my video train blog series. It's the middle of August 2011 and things have been a little slow around here the last week or so because I had another round of knee surgery on Friday and that always slows down progress on the layout for a couple weeks. And it also slows down video progress, but I do have several videos in the works. As far as product reviews, the next review video out will be on the Lionel Vision Line 700E Hudson. That is almost done and should be up on YouTube within the next week. So keep an eye out for that. After that, I've got several other reviews working. I've got a new Weaver Lackawanna 484 Pocono steam engine that just came in. That's going to be a fun engine to review. I've also got a review for the Lionel Burlington Northern SD60 and Crane Car set. I've got a MTH SD45 that's waiting to be reviewed and a couple Atlas engines as well. So lots of stuff coming down the pipe as far as reviews go. So keep an eye out for all of those. Now, as far as new stuff that's come in, I've also got some new Atlas cars that came in, got a couple box cars, and I got another of those wonderful Atlas Gunderson twin stack sets. If you haven't ever seen those, they're simply amazing, and I will probably do a quick review on those in the near future, so keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, now, something else exciting that happened today, the UPS guy brought my resurrected Lionel Vision Line Canadian Pacific ES44 Hybrid back from Lionel. As many of you know, if you've watched my videos, that engine took a nosedive off a shelf last year and was very badly damaged. I didn't think it would ever run again, but a few weeks ago I figured, what the hell, I'll send it in and see what they can do. I sent it into Lionel and they fixed it up. It looks brand new and works perfectly. So I'm really excited about that. I'm not going to show you that in this video. I'm making a separate video for that because What's happened is recently I've gotten emails from some of you that have said, Eric, how do you get such good customer service from Lionel or MTH? I've tried to get good customer service and, uh, you know, it always works out bad for me. What do you do? What's the secret? Do they, do they treat you differently? The answer is no. Uh, so what I'm doing is just making a video that documents the whole process of getting that ES44 fixed so you can see what I do. And hopefully by watching that video, some of you will be able to get some better customer service, ex service experiences out of Lionel and MTH and the other train makers. It's pretty common sense stuff, but you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment when we're upset about a broken train, we kind of lose our senses and we don't think rationally when it comes to dealing with customer service. Uh, so hopefully if by watching that video, it'll kind of help you to have a better strategy for getting good customer service. It's not that hard uh, and it's been a lot of fun making that video. So that'll be up in the next week or so. Uh, so I hope you enjoy that when it's out. Now, the big thing I wanted to show you today was if you watched my last blog video, you saw that I bought several of these MTH Genset switchers. Now, these are the scale wheeled versions. They have scale wheels, fixed pilots, and scale couplers. I bought them because I wanted the fixed pilots. But the scale wheels are a problem on a high rail layout because the scale wheels have small flanges and they derail very easily when going through three rail switches. And so MTH makes a conversion kit that will allow you to swap out the scale wheels for high rail wheels. Well, I bought three of those conversion kits for the three gen sets that I bought. They arrived yesterday, so what I'm going to do right now is show you how to swap out the scale wheels for the high rail wheels. It's really easy. It only takes a few minutes, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's one of the MTH genset switchers that I bought with these scale wheels. This is the CSX version, as you can see. What I'm going to do is turn it upside down in the engine cradle so that we have nice, easy access to the underside. Now, I should point out, this is a brand new engine cradle. This is the first engine to ever be in this cradle. I ordered it through Legacy Station. And uh, I think it's made by Bachman or somebody like that, but it's really nice. It's just a nice foam cradle, nice spot for the engine. Then you've got a little indentation back here where small parts like screws and so forth can go. I like to put the t a towel over it because I found that the small parts on the engine can sometimes snag on the foam. So putting a towel over it eliminates that and, uh, and lets you make sure that your engine will not be damaged by the cradle. Uh, but this is way better than the homemade cradle that I've been using for the last few years. Anyway, so what we're going to do is change out these scale wheels with those high rail wheels. Again, here's the set of high rail wheels. As you can see, there are four wheel sets. We've got two sets with traction tires and two sets without traction tires. So what we're going to do is on each truck, we're going to have one wheel set without traction tires and one set with traction tires. I like to put the traction tire set on the inside of each truck. So these two right here will have traction tires. 
these outer ones here will not. So let's go ahead and open up this high rail wheel set. You'll find a set of instructions. Now this is as good a time to tell you as any, but even though I'm showing you how to do this, don't just go on this video. If you're going to do this, read the instructions thoroughly because there are some detailed instructions in here that will help you avoid making mistakes and ending up with an engine that doesn't work right. But since I've already done this on two other gen sets, I'm going to set these instructions aside for now. Right here we've got some metal shims. I'll explain what these are about in just a few minutes. We'll set those aside for the time being. And then right there are the wheel sets. So we're going to do this truck first. So I'm going to pull out one of the non-traction tire sets and one of the traction tire sets. Okay, And we'll set them there like that. We'll set these off to the side for the moment. Okay, so let's get to work. What we're going to do is take off the bottom section of this truck to get access to these wheel sets. Now, even though there are a bunch of screws down here, you only have to take off four. There's one here, there's one on this end, there's one right here, and then there's one here that takes off the center rollers. So I'm going to start with this one. Now, these are all Phillips head screws, but I actually like to use a small flat head. And that may seem kind of crazy, but the reason I do that is because when you're using a Phillips head, the pressure is directed down in order to turn the screw. And I don't like pressing down on the engine when it's in the cradle because you may inadvertently break some of the detailed parts that are on the top of the engine. A small Phillips head allows you to apply the pressure horizontally so that you're, you're turning and, and the pressure is not directed down and it lets you take the screw out without putting any undue pressure on the engine. So we'll take that screw out first. And then this one. Now this one down here. For some of these hard to reach screws, I like to use this little grabbing tool. You can get this at hobby shops. And now we'll take off the center roller. Like that. And that's it. Now this piece will pop off. Set that off to the side. So now we've got access to the wheel sets. Let's go ahead and pull them out. Just real gently pull on them like that. And they should come right out. All right. And now let's put in the high rail wheels. So I'm going to grab one of the high rail wheel sets. This is the one with the traction tires on it. So it's going to go on the inside of the truck right here. Now there are gear teeth on one side of the wheel set. And those gear teeth mesh with these gears that are on the truck. So it makes it pretty easy to figure out which way you put the wheel set in. And all you do is just set it down like this. And there are two little blocks on either side of the wheel set. And these blocks have little tabs on them. And all you do is line up the tabs with the slots. And then gently slide it in. It may take a little work, but eventually they should slide in just like that. And there we go. You can see the gear teeth are meshing with the gears on the truck really nicely. What I'll do just to make sure these things are seated in all the way, I'll take a little flathead screwdriver and just push down, make sure these blocks are in there all the way. And that's it for this wheel set. Now let's do the other one. Again, here are the gear teeth. Here are those two blocks. And we're just going to pop it in and line the blocks up and slide it on in and there we go and again I'll take my screwdriver push them down just to make sure they're in there good and there we go okay that's all there is to it we're ready to close up on this truck now but before we do there is one thing I want to mention to you sometimes when you put these new wheel sets in you'll find that these little blocks here are a little loose they're not quite snug and that can be a problem because these are called conductive axle bushings. And what they do is they take the electricity from the outer rails and conduct it through the wheels and then through the bushings and into the engine. And if these bushings are loose, you'll get intermittent connectivity problems and the engine won't run right. So if you put this back together and you put it on the track and you see the engine shuddering and so forth, that may be the problem. Now, if that happens, there is a fix. MTH packages these metal shims with the wheel sets. There are two thicknesses. The thinner of the two thicknesses is usually enough to fix the problem. And what you do is you pop out the wheel set, you put the shim in there, 
and then you put the wheel set back in and that will give you a nice snug fit and you'll have solid electrical contact. Now in this case, these are in here pretty snug, so I don't think it's going to be a problem, so I won't put the shims in in this video, but if I was to put it on the track and get erratic operation, that would be the problem. I would come back and put the shims in, but for now, I'll just set these aside. Now, if you want to be on the safe side, go ahead and install the shims when you put the wheel sets in because it won't do any harm to have them in there. It'll only do good because it'll only just make the fit that much more snug and that's what you want a nice snug fit so it does absolutely no harm to go ahead and put the shims in I, I already put the shims in on the other two engines I did I'm just not gonna do it in this video because these are pretty snug and it would take several minutes to show you how to put the shims in and I just want to keep this video as short as possible but in the event you do have to put the shims in there are detailed instructions that come with the set that explain how to put them in my only word of advice would be to be very careful with the shims they're very thin strips of metal and they break very easily so be very careful when you're handling them anyway let's go ahead and close up on this truck i'm going to take that bottom lid and put it back in place like that and i will start by putting these center rollers back on like that nice and snug okay and now we'll put the other three screws back and there we go we're all done with this truck let's take these scale wheels that we took off and set them aside to keep track of them I like to just put them in the packaging that the high rail wheels came in okay now that this truck is done we're gonna do the exact same thing on this truck okay I've got the high rail wheels installed on this truck now so we're all done so now let's go ahead and take this engine out on the layout and see how it runs okay let's go ahead and power it up let's try it forward oh yeah that's running real nice Let's try reverse. Yep, likes that too. And because I've got those high rail wheels on there now, this is going to be much happier going through a three rail switch. All right. So there we go. I've got a scale wheeled MTH engine that has the fixed pilots but I've converted it for three rail operation and it's got high rail wheels so it'll go through those high rail switches without any problem now. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little how-to session. That about wraps it up for this blog episode. I'm Eric Siegel and I'll see you next time.